Hello there, people of the internet. I'm out here today with an incredibly early Mauser made car 98. This right here is a car 98 model that is uh, made for sneaky reasons. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the history behind why this rifle was made uh, under the assumptions of <laughs> not what it was actually intended for. So, World War One happened. I don't know if you guys ever heard about a little conflict called World War One, but World War One happened. Germany didn't start World War One, but boy oh boy, <laughs> were they punished for World War One. Uh, the Treaty of Versailles put a bunch of uh, really stressful situations onto Germany. And it was one of the main reasons why Germany acted the way that they did for the Second World War. Well, the Treaty of Versailles, which was what ultimately ended World War I and punished Germany wholeheartedly, uh, told the German military that they could not have any arms development and they could have only a certain amount of arms to defend themselves and, you know, just put a lot of restrictions on them. And uh, Germany eventually got to the point where they are like, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, but nah, nah, yeah, nah. And they ended up uh, making more arms for uh, services that were not their main military force. For example, they made a lot of arms for police forces, definitely not military forces and had nothing to do with uh, the German military whatsoever, but they were making arms for police forces or perhaps making rifles for the post office or things like that. This right here is an incredible example of one of those early Mausers that was not made, absolutely not at all, for German military use. Uh, I'm noticing a lot of similarities between this and the actual Car 98 Mauser style rifle that would be adopted uh, for the World War II pattern. I noticed the Car 98 that I have has a bent bolt handle. The handguard looks different on this one. Uh, the one that I have has all sorts of different uh, stamps and whatnot on it. This one right here has Mauser's stamp proudly on the receiver. Uh, the rear sights on this, just like my early pattern Car 98, has uh, elevation adjustments uh, on both the front and rear side by the looks of it. Ah, okay, that's what's going on there. I am learning about this rifle as I am playing with it. This is an absolutely incredible example of an early rifle. I'm not sure if this was refurbished at one point or another. We have, I'm assuming this is for stacking, some sort of uh, half, I don't even know what I call that, like a half clip up there. I'm assuming that there would be for stacking the rifle in one way or the other. It doesn't look broken. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be there. Uh, on your war pattern, mid-war pattern, Car 98s, there was actually a front sight hood that went over the front sight. This does not have the cutouts for that, so lots of indications on how early of a pattern rifle this is. And with this being made by Mauser, we got a serial number of B69200. Nice. If the serial number on this was, was B69420, I don't care what it would take, I would buy this rifle. I would, I would, I would, I don't care what it would take. You know, blank check, here you go. This rifle would absolutely be mine. That being said, this rifle is 100% not mine, and I'm borrowing it from a friend of mine. I plan to do multiple comparisons on this rifle. I got several Mausers that I'd like to compare uh, to over time. But right now, this is just my first initial gains from the rifle. This is the first time I've brought it out, first time I've checked it out. I have no idea what the trigger is like. I have no idea. I mean, I've fired plenty of Mausers in my time. I imagine that this is going to be very similar to the Car 98s that I've fired before. I'm assuming that this is a Car 98 pattern as well. There are some things that are different, but for all intents and purposes, this is so freaking similar to a Car 98 that I'm just going to call it a Car 98, especially seeing as it's made by Mauser. German produced rifle. I'm not positive about the year with the serial number B69200. I'm sure that somebody is going to go down in the comments below and tell me everything about this rifle and including what year it was actually produced. So these rifles are fed, five rounds, stripper clips. This is eight millimeter Mauser surplus ammunition. I think this is Yugoslavian, if memory serves me correctly, but I'm not positive about that. 
Now, the VZ24 that I also borrowed from this guy is zeroed out for 300 meters versus the German Car 98 here, along with all my other Car 98s, which is actually zeroed out to 100 meters. So I should just be able to aim directly at my target and make shots on target, assuming that this rifle is actually zeroed in, versus the VZ24, which I would have to aim quite a deal under the target to make hits on target, since we're only shooting at about 100 yards here. Okay, all right. I would like to think that I made my hit on target. So I got a couple of rounds here. Are these reloadable? I can't remember. Ah, oh, we got some rain starting to come out. Darn, I'm gonna have to take cover. My camera's not waterproof. All right, we'll pick this back up in just a few minutes. Okay, so it absolutely poured here for like an hour and a half straight, right? So it's been a little while and I just got done spinning a dog around, so I'm a little on the dizzy side. But I am bound and determined to come out here and put some more rounds through this rifle. I only stuck one round through this rifle before it began to rain. Let's go ahead, open this bad boy up, find us our partially loaded stripper clip here cram it in there and get some more rounds out on target all right let's take aim 100 yards zero we're at about 100 yards so in theory i should just be able to aim directly at our target pull the trigger and we should watch it smack the steel all right i think i heard it smack the steel also this brass is not reloadable so i'm just gonna let that fall right onto the ground. I'm not going to do anything with it. Oh, Nelly! Alright, 8mm Mauser does have a little bit of recoil behind it. Uh, more than 7mm Mauser by a long shot. More than 30 out 6 as, as well out of uh, that 1903 that I was using earlier. This feels like it has more recoil, but the 1903 also felt like a heavier rifle. I should do a follow-up video, 8mm Mauser versus 30 out 6. Oh, my poor shoulder. Ah, I hit right on the ball joint on that one. All right, let's send one more, then we'll walk down there and have a look at our target. Okay. Whew. <laughs> oh, this shoulder's getting a little sore. I might have to swap over to, you know, using this rifle the wrong way, right? Okay, let's wander down there. See what that looks like. It just got done absolutely pouring, so it's gonna be a little on the sloshy wet side whenever we walk out there. Ah. All right, interesting results. Even though we're at 100 yards and we have 100 yard zero with this rifle, we're still hitting pretty high. I was aiming relatively around here and we're hitting one, two, we got three rounds on target up. You know, that's, that's up there quite a bit. So I'm going to aim at a 6 o'clock with the target, and we're going to, you know, still shoot about 6 inches high, but hopefully we'll be more towards the center of the target. So we'll wander back there, put a couple more rounds through this rifle, and uh, see where we go from there. <laughs> okay, I've decided that I'm not hurt enough, and tired enough, and dizzy enough, and sweaty enough, and I could use, I could use a little bit more of a beating, so I'm going to load... Another five rounds, I think this is 198 grain, full metal jackets into this rifle. These are some serious freaking uh, rifle rounds, dude. Like, think about that. The 30-06 is a 150 grain, the 8mm Mauser is a 198 grain. That's almost 25% heavier than the freaking 30-06 round. That is absolutely nuts, dude. This is a behemoth of a round going downrange. All right, I'm going for a six o'clock hold now. I'd like to think that I hit it. I'm not positive about it, but I'd like to think so. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna aim at different elevations and we're gonna see how many rounds actually hit on target and where it is that they hit. So that was like directly under. Now I'll go a couple inches lower and then for the last round, I'll go a couple inches lower and we'll see where this thing actually hits on target. Oh boy, <laughs> that was a painful shot. 
Ah, uh, well, that's all right. I don't plan on using my right arm tonight. Oh, yeah. I guess I kind of do. Oh, am I? Okay, one more round. Oh, Nelly. <laughs> maybe I should. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and do this one left-handed. Mama didn't raise no bitch. Mama would have told me get out there and shoot that car 98 with your your proper hand. Don't do it the wrong way. Ah, okay. Let's go ahead and wander down there and uh, see what it looks like now. So I went ahead and I shot like right under the target for the first two rounds, and then I went down a little bit lower. I think I went down a little bit lower. I mean, not much lower, maybe a couple of inches per shot. And uh, we'll wander down there and see what that looks like. Okay, coming up onto target. This is already a much better group than what we saw before. All right, so we do have a round that kind of went off to the wayside. What can I say? My shoulder hurts. I've been shooting guns absolutely all day. We got one, two rounds right there, three and four. And that's my hand. <laughs> we got four rounds uh, pretty much on center target. Uh, I shot, you know, a little high, a little bit lower, a little bit lower, just a little bit to see uh, what all would uh, occur. And it looks like I figured out pretty much the point of aim. Aiming down at the bottom of the target, your rounds are going to hit probably about eh, six inches high or so at 100 yards, assuming that you're using the ammunition that I'm using. You know, you swap ammo and maybe you'll hit right on target. Maybe you'll be a foot high. I don't know. But this stuff right here seems to shoot about six inches high, which is... Uh, about what I would expect with uh, what it is that I'm actually firing. But I did make my shots on target. That is absolutely beautiful. I think I'm going to go grab another stripper clip of ammunition just because this is a really good time. And I have to work for like another week. So I won't be able to come out here and use the gun range until then. So until my arm gives out, I'm going to go blast a few more rounds. You know, I can understand the shoulder pain. I've been out here shooting guns all day, but man my hip hurts like what the hell my left hip hurts <laughs> I'm getting too old for this man got hip pain and some back pain going on I'm getting too old to be able to handle this I, I my the friend I'm borrowing these rifles from he watches these videos I guarantee he's gonna have something to say about me being too old for this because uh, he is an older gentleman so I'm just gonna ask hey buddy uh, when was the last time you went out to the gun range, hmm? No? Didn't think so. Alright. <laughs> Should have called him out. <laughs> okay. He's gonna send me a text message about that. Let's go ahead. Still zeroed at a hundred yards, which I don't necessarily believe. At least not with the ammunition that we're using here. Oh man, these are some nice stripper clips though. Go ahead and toss that one in my pocket. Whenever I get like the really nice one, I'll take a little sharpie and I'll put an X on it so I know that's the good one. So we'll go ahead and send another couple of rounds down range. Since it just rained, I did not spray paint my target. So uh, target's not spray painted. We won't really be able to see where these rounds hit. So I'm just going to aim for the steel and we might wander down there because why the hell not. But it's just going to be a target riddled with bullets. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and send some lead down range, shall we? I'm going to hold this nice and firmly into my shoulder like it's going out of style. Oh boy. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that one, pal. Yeah. Whew. Okay. We're going to keep on keeping on. This is like the ninth rifle I've shot today. I've been out here all day. It's been a fantastic time, guys. All right. I've taken up using like the side of my bicep versus the cup of my shoulder like I have been using. And it makes things a little bit more bearable, but I imagine it is diminishing accuracy a little bit. All righty. <laughs> this is actually a really nice rifle. Incredibly smooth. Oh boy! <laughs> Ow, that one hurt. <laughs> All right, got my Johnny boy. One more. We'll put one more round on target. Okay. Whew. Ow. <laughs> now my bicep hurts. 
Uh, I'm just falling apart here, guys. Still not as bad as that Sega 12 video I did. Anyone who hasn't seen that Sega 12 video, go check that out. I ran a tremendous amount of ammo through that thing, including three-inch Magnum slugs. <laughs> that, that sucks. All right, let's wander down there and have a look at this target. Okay, as promised, here's our target. Uh, yeah, I can't really tell where the rounds, <laughs> where those rounds hit, so... Uh, there's our target. Here you guys go. This one right here almost looks like it was keyholing. It looks like it smacked on its side, but I'm fairly certain that it didn't. So, yeah, there you guys go. All right, well, all right. This right here is a rifle of absolutely exceptional quality. Um, I would expect nothing less from a German Mauser from before the Second World War. I wouldn't really call this a car 98 pattern. I'd call it more like a uh, a commercial available short Mauser Mauser 98. Uh, that would that would be a more accurate designation than uh, what it is that I was calling it earlier. Of course, for all intents and purposes, like mechanically speaking, and you know everything speaking, this is basically a car 98 with a straight <laughs> Mauser bolt. So really not too much of a difference I'm not that far off I'm sure somebody down in the comments is gonna feel all nitpicky and go down in the comments and type in yeah it's not a car 98 that's such and such all right yeah cool I know it's not technically a car 98 but it is for all intensive purposes <laughs> close enough so uh, thanks for watching folks this is a absolutely fantastic rifle and I had a lot of fun out here shooting with it today I need I need, I need some ice for my shoulder actually. I've got dinner cooking, so I'm actually gonna head inside, do dinner. Uh, it's like getting dark out. I'm not sure how well that's picking up on camera, but it's getting dark out. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the outro here. Uh, thanks for watching folks. Subscribe to the channel, like the video. Description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go ahead and go check that out. Uh, I'm going to head inside. I had a really good day today. Ran a lot of rounds through a lot of rifles. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day, and I'm sure that I will see you around in the next video. I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garrett. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.